Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of Soldiers Talk the Podcast. I'm your host, Staff Sergeant McPherson, and on this show we discuss military topics with current and prior service members. Today I have Staff Sergeant Keones with me. Uh, Sergeant, kind of go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Hello, my name is Staff Sergeant Keones. Um, I've been in the military for nine years. Um, I've been stationed in Korea, Fort Lewis, and now here at Fort Bragg since 2017. Um, I've been doing a lot of different um, culinary programs. So out of the nine years that I've been in, I've competed in culinary competitions um, for seven years. Um, and um, But I've been in the dining facility, worked as a head baker. Um, I was also the kiosk manager. But out of my whole career, I like inst- being an instructor, doing the culinary, the advancement of our MOS. Okay, so where are you originally from? Sorry. So I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, my family's from Puerto Rico. My first language is Spanish. Um, but but yeah, from Ohio, small small town in Ohio. Okay, so uh, what made you chose to be 92 Golf? So before the military, I was in culinary school. I wanted to originally um, open up a restaurant. Um, and then I just ended up um, joining the military, and I was the first uh, person in my family to join the military, so I didn't know much of it. And being nervous and scared, um, they said 92 Golf is a cook, so I was like, okay, I already have a little bit of knowledge of it, so give me that job. And um, it ended up working out for itself, um, like I said, I was in culinary school, and now I do what I was originally doing uh, before the military. Okay, so uh, what made, like, were you always interested in cooking? Like, I know you said you had you was going to open a restaurant and stuff like that, but what made you get into, like, uh, loving, like, to cook and stuff like that? Uh, so my family's really old school. Like I said, they're from Puerto Rico, so all the women in our family cook. So I was always in the kitchen as a little girl with my grandmother cooking. So I fell in love with um, just being in the kitchen with her and cooking different meals. So growing up, I would um, cook for my family, cook meals. Um, So it's something that I just felt passionate with. Um, I actually cook and bake. I when I joined the military, I saw my NCO, um, Sar Segura, he was making a cake. And I was like, oh, I want to learn that because I didn't know nothing about baking before I joined the military. And when I saw the skills and the um, artistic side of it, I was like, I want to learn that. That's what I want to do. And the Army, like, almost showed me a hidden talent that I didn't know that I had because now um, I I do a lot of pastry stuff. Um, I just um, did my own um, baking business I made it a LLC last year so um, so yeah so it just with the military it helped me progress and learn a lot of things that I didn't know that I was capable of and what can you name some of those things like or other than baking um, so with the baking um, I've done um, like plated of desserts like five star Michelin style um, I know how to make ice cream from scratch, cake from scratch. I decorate cookies. Um, and then cooking-wise, I'm still on uh, learning on that side. I tend to observe other, um, like, soldiers or chefs that actually know how to cook, like fabricate meats and sauces. So I tend to try to learn those set of skills because – when I was a young soldier, uh, he was a master pastry chef, and there's only like 16 of them, and I was able to meet one of them, and he said a great culinarian knows both pastry and savory, so they know how to cook and bake. So that always stuck on my mind, and it was something that I always try to remind myself, and wa- if I want to be the best and um, become the best, that I need to know both savory and um, Savory and dessert side of cooking. 
Okay, so savory. What can you explain? What is actually savory is? So, to in my words, savory is um, like it's not sweet. So you have chicken, your salads, um, your fish um, meals. Like those are the savories that they're your non-sweet items. Okay, I got you. So, you are instructor here in Culinary Art Center. So how long have you been an instructor? So I actually just started being an instructor since last December here at the um, CATC. But when I was in my own dining facility, I taught and mentored a lot of soldiers in different areas. Okay, so kind of what's the transition from being in the dining facility to actually being an instructor? So do it, is it kind of the same thing or what? So no, um, it's here at the culinary building, you have more one-on-one time with the soldiers and actually being able to teach them on certain skills, as in in the dining facility, you have to teach them in a time management because you have to put the meal out. You have to be able to set up your line before um, the you know warrior restaurant opens for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Here, they're able to take their time and focus on perfecting that skill and being able to, um, you know, start that product over and over until they get it right. Okay, so what's some of the stuff that you actually uh, teach here? So here um, we teach them, you know, both savory and um, sweet um, desserts. So... Like I could tell you that I've been training our student team. Mm -hmm. The student team, we, well, Fort Bragg team, we just went to Fort Lee to compete in the annual um, Fort Lee culinary competition. And we came out second place out of the whole competition. There were like about 18 teams competing. And then our student team overall won first place. So I've been training them and managing them since um, last December. And then now we're, we got, since we won first place, we're competing in Vegas in July for the Nationals competition. So I could tell you that is a four-course meal. So they have a fish dish, a salad, a entree, and dessert. So, um, so yeah, so they learn different te- techniques uh, for fabricating fish, making fish sauces, uh, making your vegetable component, um, and then your starch. Starches come from quinoa, um, also um, rice, um, risotto. So those are little um, like components that you will have on the fish dish. And then um, for the salad, they go from adding like not your regular Caesar salad, uh, for instance. We have, like, a goat cheese tart um, with the salad and some fruit on it. So what we do here at the culinary building is taking, like, regular food and making it artistic. So it's not just tasting, tasting of it, but also, um, like, I, like, as soon as you see it, it's like, oh, I want that because it looks good. Um, So we show them how to do that. We show them different um, pastries, doing from layered cake, from opera cakes, where you have like six layers in one cake with different fillings. We show them how to make sauces, um, macerated fruit, where we cut fruit, the fruit up, and also um, marinate it in alcohol. So they they learn like different skills, and we try to have them well-rounded. Because like I said before, I try to um, teach the soldiers and mentor them and let them know that if this is your passion, if this is what you want to do, you want to be able to know savory and dessert side of it. You just don't want to keep yourself composed in one section. Um, for instance, if you if this is what you want to do outside of the military, you'll be able to get hired over somebody that just do meats because you know how to do do meats and desserts. They could place you anywhere in the kitchen compared to somebody who has, you know, has a good set of skills for meats. 
I got you. So today, uh, sorry, Keonis, she uh, instructed the class. When I first got here earlier, she was showing the uh, students how to do what? What was? So I showed the students how to make American buttercream. Okay, so uh, she showed the students how to make American buttercream, and I just want you guys to check that out. So uh, take time to check this out when she was teaching uh, teaching the class earlier. So today we are going to be doing uh, American buttercream, and I'll be showing you guys how to do the uh, Italian buttercream. We're going to do the ganache, and then we're going to start stacking up our round cakes and then our sheet cakes. We'll probably end up doing the sheet cakes first. Uh, until Chief um, gets here, and because she's gonna show you the round cake. Um, thank you. So you guys um, have well when you go back to your kitchens. So your American buttercream. It's your you have your 32 ounce um, powdered sugar. You have your Crisco. Uh, shortening, another word for shortening. Um, your eight ounce short shortening, your half a cup of heavy cream, and then your one pound soft butter. So when you make any type of buttercream, you want your butter to be soft. So um, if you're gonna do buttercream tomorrow, you have your butter out the uh, day before. So it could be nice and soft, soft and smooth. You don't have butter chunks because how cold it is. All right, so the first thing is, and then the equipment that you would need is the Vitamix with a whisk attachment and your bowl. So the first thing what we will do is put your shortening and butter in. And then you will slowly add your heavy cream. And make sure when you're doing this, it's on low speed because you're going to have powder all over. You're going to have uh, heavy cream all over yourself. So you want to You want to also make sure you scrape your bowl so that you could get any 
um, of the mix of the shortening and butter mixed in with the rest of the buttercream. Because you don't want to end up scraping it and then you have chunks of buttercream, uh, butter and crisp of shortening together. So make sure you scrape it and then you put it on high speed. And you just mix it for like five minutes uh, so that everything uh, mix it all together. What type of pizza are we looking for? So, it's not really a, uh, a peak when it comes to American buttercream. Uh, you just want it like nice and fluffy, like not soupy. Mm -hmm. So, you want to be able, uh, like so smoothness. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, uh, just fluff. Um, like if it's too smooth, like silky smooth, you have to just continue to mix it. So you mix it and then you, the bowl that you guys have on your table, when you guys are done, you will be placing your buttercream on there.
be, I think I'd be able to fit four people here, and then two people, two people there. So you could go ahead, um, go ahead and clean up and um, get this station ready, and then that station ready for you guys to. You have everything that you need on your station. Um, Okay, now that you guys have seen a little bit what Staff Sergeant Keonis does, uh, we're going to kind of talk about, like, what was the selection process on what, like, you've been uh, selected as an instructor? Like, is it a certain process that you guys go through? or? So, yes. So, I know um, they either do an interview or you have a cook-off. And last year when they did the instructor um, position, or the um, culinary arts team um, tryouts, they actually interviewed you because it's not always about what you know, but how you are as a person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, we want skill sets, but we also want people who are, you know, team, they're, they're team players. Um, they, they're able to um, learn, like put their ego and pride um, pride down so that you're you be able to learn you know from other other people um and then like having passion and desire um and that willpower of our um you know mos um because you'll be able to teach somebody um that has willpower that has um passion and drive over somebody who's like okay i know it all i, I know what i'm doing because, um, you know, that's not a team player. At the end of the day, you know, we want to teach and mentor and lead soldiers so that they can see that there's more to our job than just a dining facility. So, um, so yeah, so we just went through an interview. They they talk to you and see how you are as a person to see, you know, if you, if you have that drive, passion, and will. So, was, like, did you always want to be an instructor or? So no, um, I before like around 2018 um, was my um, last year before um, I had that two year gap of no competition. That was my last competition before this year um, to compete. And after one of my soldiers that I mentored won gold medal for her events, it made me realize that I had that feeling like I cried. I was so proud of her um, because I seen the passion and drive and the talent that she had. I It's almost like I brought it to like help her realize um, what she has and what she could do with it. And it made me feel so much alive um, to see that and grow, go through that than me actually competing in the competition um, and as a young soldier, I already competed um, and won a lot of medals with as when I was a um, specialist in 2015, I won my first um, medal for um, my pastry dish and I won best student pa pastry dish um, out of the whole competition. And then in 2016, I was a professional and I uh, won um, a, I got my first gold, and I won best um, professional pastry dish out of the whole competition, and I also got selected on the um, USACAT, United States Army Culinary Team, and I was able to go compete in the Culinary Olympics. So as a young soldier between 2015 and 2018, I was able to accomplish a lot and experience a lot, and I had just that feeling you know, at that last competition in 2018 when my soldier won and won her fir first um, gold medal is like, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. I want, I want to make a difference and have s other soldiers feel the way I did as a young soldier when I competed and when I helped them, when my mentors helped me see my passion and my talent. I want to be able to be, be that to um, other soldiers. Okay, so the competition you was talking about, so far as the competition, uh, how many competitions have you been to? So out of the nine years, I've been to seven. 
seven competitions. So are they all the same or what? Yes. So um, they're all the same. They have the same categories. Sometimes, for instance, for COVID, they took some categories, some events out. So it's a lot shorter. Um, but each year is the same, same categories um, and same events that they have. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, now that you guys kind of got a gist of, like, uh, some of the stuff Staff Sergeant Kionis does, and she teaches here at the uh, Culinary Arts Center, uh, is there anything else you want to leave the soldiers with, Sarge, uh in closing? Uh, yeah, if you, no matter uh, what you do, um, if you whatever you're passionate about and that you have that, will, you know, willpower, um, to accomplish things and that drive, um, you know, stay on top of it and, you know, practice. Practice makes perfect. And don't give up on your dreams. You know, there are people out there that are willing to put in the time and effort to, you know, to see you do great and help you um, be in that place. Um, So, and things are never just hand it to you if you want it you have to go out and get it you have to put that time you have to put that effort no matter um how long it it takes because I've done 24-hour training and um and it's exhausting but I know that at the end of the day it's going to be rewarding there's going to be um a good outcome after it so so yeah okay there you guys go uh And this has been another episode of Soldiers Talk, the podcast, and I'll see you guys in formation.